There are things that will affect our ecosystem long before it affects us personally. So it's really important to take good care of it. One of those places is the Texas Sea Life Center in Corpus Christi, Texas. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. I'm Gary. And we are at the Texas Sea Life Center. Whoop, there it is. <laughs> just south of Corpus Christi, Texas, um, across the JFK Causeway Bridge. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go inside and we're gonna check it out and see what they all have. Because of the cold weather that we had about a week or so, well, almost two weeks ago now, it um, caused the water to get cold and the sea, the sea turtles were greatly affected by that. And it, it did something to them called cold stunning cold stunning and that means that they can't swim and they could die so they were rescuing them all over the coast and they were going to different facilities in Corpus Christi and around the area and Port Aransas and other places too and they were rescuing the turtles giving them the medical attention that they needed most of them went back to the Gulf but there are a few residents still here and we're gonna go see them and we're gonna go on the tour Come along with us. How big can they get? Uh, 300, 400 pounds. Oh my yeah, gosh. They can get huge. Uh, but yeah, so we mostly get the juvenile crabs here because it's a great place for them to eat and kind of fresh and grow. Uh, but we don't have many nesting grounds for them. Uh, them, they'd rather go to, say, Hawaii, uh, Australia, uh, other warmer tropical locations. Okay. Yeah. He looks like he's taking a shower over there. <laughs> they love to sit under that. Uh, <laughs> Where his tumor was removed from, um, and his tumor was about the size of his head when he came in. Oh my uh, goodness! So it was like he was resting on a pillow all the time. Aww. Uh, but so he kind of jumped ahead of everyone else for surgery because it was pretty dire. Um, and luckily he made it through the surgery, recovered, and now he's eating great. He's a lot more active, so he's doing a lot better. 
Um, so come April or March, he'll probably be released. Oh, awesome. Um, and then the other one in there, he came in with this recent cold stunning, um, but he has quite a bit of FP on his underside. You can't see how much because it's mostly on his uh, uh, underside, uh, but it's a lot more, so we wanted to give him a better, uh, keep a better eye on him. Uh, so that's why he's in this tank as well. Okay. Uh, but both of these have FP, and greens can be kept together easily because they um, oftentimes forage in the same area. So they're kind of more social than any other sea turtle. Um, but mm -hmm. if we had a couple of camps, we would actually have to separate all of them. Which one? Uh, the Kemp's Ridley or a loggerhead, because those guys are carnivores. Um, so oh. just to keep them from picking on each other, uh, yeah. we'll keep those guys separate, but greens, they can chill out together and be fine. Uh. New nest on South Padre Island. Um, and so there's a lot of protections for these guys, especially in the summer whenever they're nesting. Uh, and this is a, a camp's... Kemp's Ridley. Mm -hmm. Kemp's Ridley. Yep. Okay. Uh, and so these guys only get to be about two to three feet long and a hundred pounds or so. Um, so this is the biggest that she'll get. Uh, okay. She is full grown. Uh, for her, she washed up after a big storm with pneumonia. Um, and unfortunately, she's been releasing some gases in her inner body cavity that have made her more buoyant than she should be. Uh, so that's why she floats there at the top. She should actually be able to dive and rest on the bottom. Um, so since she has those buoyancy issues and she can't dive uh, to get her food or to escape predators, uh, she has to stay with us for at least right now. Uh, we are still treating the pneumonia, so hopefully once we get that under control, uh, she'll naturally release the gas, but unfortunately we can't go in there and try to remove it for her. Okay. Um, so it's just kind of an if or when waiting game for her. But she's also pretty active. She is. Uh, she eats her food on a tong. So we bring her her fish, stick it in, and she swims up and grabs it. And she is pretty feisty. Uh, sometimes it's like playing tug of war <laughs> uh, when she accidentally grabs onto the tongs. runny nose um, and that's because um, him and Regina, wherever she is, both developed respiratory uh, diseases while they were um, pets. Uh, they were just kept on an apartment balcony with not a lot of room, oh. um, not the correct UV and humidity. Oh. Uh, so not a great space for them. Okay and where did you say they normally are from? South America. South America. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so they are common pets here though, um, if taken care of properly. Okay. Uh, so that's how they ended up with us, and now they're our educational animals, and they are our favorites for field trips, because they're great with everyone. Everyone gets to feed them lettuce, and they're always hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, is there, yeah, all proper. Oh, <laughs> he saw me taking his picture, so yeah. he posed. <laughs> And they also are great at soaring around and hunting like that. Um, plus, they figured out that if one of them walks through the bushes and flushes out them, uh, another can wait somewhere higher to swoop down and grab it. So, <laughs> super, super smart birds. So, they um, don't just be on carry. Yeah. They don't go after life stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, so, Neil is going to be the one on this middle beam right here. He is missing part of his left beam. And while this top is blind in his right beam, uh, so you can see that really easily. Wallace has a lot more plumage on that side than Neil does because Neil doesn't have all of his feet. Um, and Wallace really turns to look at you. Yeah, there it is. You can see he's got like an eye patch yeah. almost over that eye uh, that he's blind in. Uh, unfortunately, hawks do use both of their eyes by not really vision to really hunt and soar around navigate their environment. Uh, so he can't be released even though uh, he's got both his eyes. Uh, but these two, as Harris Hawks, they are actually one of the only species of raptors that hunts in bigger groups. So they go around in packs of two to six birds scouting out areas and hunting together. And so they can take down a larger prey with that method, um, which is really nice. And so since we had two of them, we put them together to see how they would do. And luckily, they have gotten along great. Uh, they didn't fight or anything like that, so uh, we've got down.
two bachelors in here. Um, huh. Also in the wild, the female is going to be the leader of the pack, which is pretty rare for raptors uh, to have a matriarchy, um, but they do. Um, and so maybe one day if we ever get a female in, they can have their leader. But for now, it'll just be them two. <laughs> Not a great spot to be in as a tortoise. Um, so we've gotten most of it off, although there's still some stuck in the cracks, but we can't use any chemical solvent or anything like that because you just soak it up <laughs> and yeah. we don't want to take a sandpaper or anything too rough to a shell because you can feel through there. Mm. Uh, so the rest of it is just kind of flaking off over time. Um, but you can tell the difference between a male and female pretty easily, especially in Michelangelo, because the male's going to have a very deep divot on their underside. Ah. Um, and then they also have a much larger little horn piece right here, because if they were fighting with another male, they would use that to flip him over. Ah. Um, and that's a KO move for a tortoise. Okay. Um, luckily, he doesn't have to worry about fighting anyone here. He's got his own little area. Um, but he does have a nice little horn right there if he ever did get uh, in a fight. <laughs> So when you got him, mm -hmm. you said he was in a classroom. Um, did he, did somebody in the one of the parents or something of the school? Did they report it, or how did you end no, up? With I think him? he was actually found like in like the grass near the school. Um, oh. So he either had been released or I don't know somehow escaped. Um, but the school ended up getting a big fine for it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they definitely did uh, find out who had it. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Big no-no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Horn piece right here is a lot smaller, although broken, but usually the females go into two prongs um, rather than a big horn piece. <laughs> uh, she's like, put me down. <laughs> um, but uh, they don't really fight with each other. They get along great. Um, the only time they push and shove is when it comes to food. <laughs> um, but these girls were all pets at one point, and it's very hard to release a pet tortoise because they can get what's called wandering tortoise syndrome or they just walk around looking for home uh, they won't eat or sleep so Aww. we had to create a new home for them and take care of them so this is just a very young one yeah she's a bit younger they don't get nearly as big as the males do okay. um clark is kind of and lewis is kind of the bigger size i think she can get a little bit bigger but they don't get quite as big um, and this is our smallest girl, and you can see that she had the beginnings of that pyramiding um, wow. starting on her shell. So uh, we do know whoever had her, they just dropped her off on the porch, um, oh. wasn't taking very good care of her. So, and, and again, what did that mean? When they uh, so that the means they're getting too much protein too in much their protein. diet, um, causing that uh, to build up on their shell, okay. you know, rather than grow out. Uh, popular pets, they're small. This is the biggest that he'll get and they are usually very sweet, very docile. Um, Boris is not. Uh, he's actually on his way to come bite me. Oh! <laughs> if he can get out of that crack he's gotten himself in. Huh. And it, you said it's a pineapple tortoise? Uh, yeah, Russian pineapple Russian tortoise. Russian pineapple tortoise. Mm -hmm. um, but these guys are actually much more common to see in America or in homes as pets than they are in Russia anymore actually. It's pretty rare to find them out in their native habitat. Mm -hmm. um, but because they're from Russia, they actually are great at hibernating. Um, in reptiles, it's actually called brumation, and it's kind of like they turn off. Um, but yeah, these guys can, I think, do it for up to nine months, uh, as they are from Russia, where it gets pretty cold. I just read about alligators in North Carolina mm -hmm. that are in brumation, brumation because of yeah. the cold. I'd and never heard of that before. And they stick their nose out of the ice. I've yes. seen videos yeah. of that. Yeah. 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 Um, I didn't know that they did it as well, but huh. yeah, a lot of reptiles brumate. Um, we've got some snakes that usually are like the friendly neighborhood snake that hang around here. Uh, they have all kind of gone into hiding or brumation uh, since the winter hit, so we don't have to worry about them <laughs> right now at least. He's gonna go shrimp. Yep. Like a slide. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Um, these go. guys were also sent to space before humans were, uh, so they orbited the moon and came back safe and sound. Mm. Uh, and in captivity, they can live up to a hundred years. Um, so he'll be with us for a while. He mm -hmm. is a full-grown adult, so he's probably oh, right on your face, Boris. Oh. Um, <laughs> you're not. You don't have your agile moves right now. Yeah. Um, but they uh, only get this big. Okay.
and he's usually a lot quicker than this. Oh, really? He's, he's slowed down a little bit in the winter, but okay. in the summer, oh, he runs at us. <laughs> oh. oh. He's going to bite your toe. Mm -hmm. He's like, get out of here. <laughs> My space. <laughs> my space. There well, there he's he's moving. moving. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. <laughs> you win. <laughs> we are on a walkway right now, just a really short little nature walk near, right, very close, very close to the Texas Sea Life Center. It was closed when we came back here and we met a couple who were on their bikes, Jody and Chuck from Arizona. And we talked with them for about an hour <laughs> in wild, the parking yeah. lot. That was fun. <laughs> so we met some new people. And uh, hi, if you're watching this. <laughs> and I hope you like this video on the Texas Sea Life Center. It was well worth the $9 donation that we did uh, because it's all, you know, it's going to a good cause. Education. Oh my gosh, you got, there's so much education involved in just letting humans know the things that happen when you don't take care of our earth and our planet and our people and I mean and animals and <laughs> yeah and lessen the garbage and all that stuff it just everything has an impact there isn't anything that you can do that doesn't have some kind of an impact good or bad so always be mindful of how you can be helping not only our environment, which affects animals and plant life and things like that, but it also affects us eventually too. So just be very mindful of what you do with things like your garbage and your plastic. Oh, stop using the plastic. If you can avoid that, that'd be great. That's a big step right there. Anyway, hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't yet. And next to it, a bell's going to pop up, ring the bell, and you'll be notified every time new videos come up. If you don't ring the bell, you won't know. So until next time, God, God bless. bless.